Today we're going to be installing the Apex Badlands 12,000 pound winch from Harbor Freight on Ryan's Tacoma. So he has that all pro uh, front bumper, which we're going to be installing it on. And uh, it requires a little bit of modification because the holes which you know you mount the uh, winch to are a little too close to the front tubes of the bumper and they just doesn't have enough clearance for this particular application and I'll show you why in a minute but anyways uh, here I have this everything laid out which comes in the box from the Apex 12,000 pound winch uh, from Harbor Freight and we're just going to kind of go over briefly what all comes in box it unboxing and you know overview video so I'm going to try and make it as quick as possible just so you know everything that comes in it so it comes with this um, this is a controller relocation bracket. Uh, this is the controller, obviously. We'll show you in a few minutes here when everything's taken apart. You have your uh, your big power coming from back here, going into your 12 volt battery. And then of course it comes with all the wiring you're gonna need. And one thing I do appreciate about this is that being that this is for, for freight and it's coming from China, you'd expect that there'd be lots of assembly required, which there is, but I mean, of course, but uh, this is nice having this already heat shrinked um, over the leads for the positive and negative. Uh, it comes with the 50 amp solenoid, which is really nice um, that they already include this because when you're not using it in your truck, you wanna definitely have this switch to the off position as it is now so that it's not creating any pull from your battery. Another uh, great feature, which I again have on mine out there, I'll show you how it's mounted. Mine's, mine's mounted a little bit different. Mine's mounted feet first He's gonna have the ability to go um, uh, lead first. So I'm not sure what that would be called, but um, I'll show you about that in a minute. Anyways, um, has this nice, uh, and they, they, they cover this with a rubber coating as well. This is the wireless winch controller. Uh, it has the option to plug in and charge here, which is really nice, but it is wireless, which is really nice. Comes with your uh, Badland jet tag for Harbor Freight fanboys, I guess. Uh, and then it's gonna come with all of your necessary hardware. Aluminum Haas Fairlead, uh, which is great for synthetic line, which this has. Um, obviously the Apex only comes in synthetic, which is really nice. It's actually really light comparatively to uh, most winches for its size for a 12,000 pound winch. Uh, there is a brake here or a, a clutch, so, it has your uh, clutch here for free spool, so you can just have it on uh, free spool here, and then you'll be able to just pull your, your line out, and then if it's engaged, obviously, the gears inside will be engaged, and it won't come out unless you use the controller. Uh, it comes with some extra stickers, and we're trying to figure out what these are. They're like Velcro, um, like little covers for something. It looks like maybe an effort to be a tree trunk protector or something but uh anyways yeah that's all that's going to come in the box and then a nice long um covered with this uh really good i forget what it's called again they use it you know you use its automotive use um for you know temperature and weather protection anyways what we need to do is the holes here on the all pro bumper are big enough to accept the studs for the uh winch uh, the, to mount the feet in. The only issue is it, the front of the uh, winch comes into contact with this front tube here. So what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to take measurements and then instead of these holes, we're gonna have to actually drill a hole or four more holes further back about a half inch. Okay, so as it sits in here and it, sit, it does fit correctly, but the front fascia or the front part of this plate is contacting here on the tube. I'm going to go ahead and use my, um, again from Harbor Freight, it's a little bit bigger size of a, a drill just so it makes it easier to get pressure on that because going through steel can be kind of a chore. So having that extra weight of that drill will definitely help. So we've got all of our holes drilled here. We ended up just going and getting a half inch uh, bit. This is uh, the type of drill bit you're going to need for drilling through steel and this is probably quarter inch uh, mild steel obviously and uh, you can see it's it has it has a bevel to it it has a very like you know pronounced bevel to it whereas we were trying to drill through with this 
and this just was not doing the trick um, because this is for drilling pilot holes. Obviously it has that center, you know, pilot starter and then it's just kind of flat. So again, you're gonna need one of these and this is just black oxide steel, not titanium or anything, um, but it worked out pretty well. There are drilled, we tested it and it does fit, but now we are going to need to drill out these holes here for the Haas Fairlead. So uh, these studs that come with the winch are too thick. Uh, these are half inch, this is 3 8 inch. So we're gonna drill those out and then we're gonna figure out our wiring. Your ground is back here. So that's what we're gonna be obviously uh, using our ground cable and then ground needed chassis somewhere. This is your ground for your uh, controller. Uh, we're, we're opting to keep on because we can, because it's not obstructing the, only thing it's obstructing is the Toyota grill, which we're gonna be modifying, AKA cutting. Uh, to make it work. So the way we've wired it is, this is going to be your ground for your controller. Behind the support for the front clip and gone underneath the driver's side headlight. We're gonna take all the slack out of this, but on the underside, there is a plenty enough room to get both the ground and the power cable up there and we've run the ground. So now we have it wired in there and we also have it, the wireless turned off. So now you can see the wired is uh, working on the controller or it's, it's indicating that it's wired now because it senses that being plugged in. So we'll go ahead and, um, and the way you get, I'll show you how to, it's really easy to get the hook to mount like this, which looks cool. And it obviously it keeps it from, keeps you from having to, you know, mount it or, uh, you know, put it on shackles somewhere and have the excess coming out. So Ryan's going to go ahead and push the out button in a sec here. It is engaged. So if, uh, I don't think we can actually, oh, we can turn it to free spool. So let's just try this real quick. Yeah. So you can see it takes a little bit of resistance, but I can pull it out just like that really easily by hand, uh, with it not engaged. Now we're going to engage it. And then Ryan is going to uh, push winch in. And it works, obviously. So in order to get this to, you get it right up there. One more, one more, yep, right there. And then swivel it, obviously. Just be very careful to keep your fingers on the outside here. You don't want to have to, you know, risk something. Anything bad can always happen. That's what I always try and, you know, picture or, you know, keep in my head. So when you're using, yeah, Murphy's Law, when you're, when you're working with something with this much, you know, power amp draw, then you don't, you just don't want to have your hands in a piece of machinery like that. Anyways, when you get it up to this close, you just kind of check it with a, a few different presses and then uh, you, you test it, uh, how tight it is in there. So go ahead, Ryan. Go ahead. And then you can kind of hear it, it, it clicked right there. It stopped. And I mean, that's, it, it's going to work itself loose eventually. And I always just, you know, after a few weeks, I'll go ahead and tighten mine up. But I like that, that clean flush look like that. Um, anyways, yeah, so that's all in. Just remember guys, when you're done to turn your solenoid to the off position so that it's not you know, draining your battery at all. Anyways, uh, we're gonna get everything cleaned up and tucked in and then we're gonna go ahead and uh, look at the grill and see how much we need to cut out of that. We're gonna just take off up to the Toyota emblem because I mean, to have it look aesthetically pleasing, that would be ideal. So what I'm gonna do is cut from here. So I probably just go straight across um, this area here. And then we're gonna test fit just to make sure we can get the emblem in. And if we can, then it's a win-win. Um, we lose, we're gonna lose just this bracket here. So it's, it'll still be, you know, pretty secure in there, but we're gonna just take an aim and grind our tool real quick. This is the finished product, uh, yeah. I think it looks really good in there. It's pretty cool too. Like this bumper is really nice how it, it's like completely exposed. Like in mine, the ARB is just kind of, it covers the whole thing. So the only thing you see really is the fairly, you know, it's just back there. So yeah, what we ended up doing was we just cut a little bit out of obviously the bottom chrome part and then about what? One, two, three, three of these teeth basically. They're left just one on each side. 
and that allows you to get access to the free spool or the, the clutch. For all intents and purposes, it's mounted and it'll work. It'll recover if we get stuck and we're able to re retain the grill. All in all, pretty uh, easy install. You know, you just have to have a little bit of ingenuity and uh, a little bit of imagination. So anyways, we're gonna go out and test it eventually. I'd like to go back out to Brown's camp now that it's back open because the wildfires aren't an issue anymore. Anyways, uh, yeah, we'll figure out an area where we can get in mud and get in kind of deep bogged and then use that and see how well it does. So make sure you subscribe to stay up to speed on all of that. And until next week, I will see you on the trails.